honestly, happy Easter, everybody, you guys. Jesus, it's like Jesus was, re was re re resurrected. I'll be back. I want to tell everybody happy Easter and thank you for supporting me and following me. Thank you. It came as a shock to many of Rolando Romero's fans and other onlookers as he broke down emotionally following his loss against Isaac Cruz. While on a live session, Raleigh Romero got emotional as he spoke about his knockout defeat to Isaac Cruz. After so many attempts to hold himself and put up a confident appearance, he failed so woefully and ended up breaking down. Many felt pity for him and wished the outcome of the match had gone his way, while others were indifferent, claiming he had not been handling his loss professionally. Let's get right into it. I went over there. He ain't okay. show up. I was like, where the fuck are you? I, and he's mm. like, oh, well, well, let's do it. We'll, we'll do it today then. Boom. I went over there again. He Ever since his sad loss against Isaac Pitbull Cruz, Raleigh Romero has been seen with a variety of emotional reactions, ranging from being optimistic, affirmative, and balanced to being depressed, confused, disorientated, and even teary. The bout ended in an eighth round technical knockout victory for Isaac Pitbull Cruz, stripping Raleigh Romero of the World Boxing Association super lightweight championship title he had been holding for close to a year. In what was only his second defeat in about 17 bouts, this seemed so sorrowful and heartbreaking for Raleigh Romero, who has come up with mixed reactions, with the latest being a breakdown on an Instagram live session. But before then, his emotional and mental state could be assessed from the ring immediately after the fight was over. In his post-fight interview, Rolando was asked what went wrong during the fight. And for a good few seconds, Raleigh Romero just stood there with the microphone in front of him, but no words coming out of his mouth. He took a lot of time before saying that he wanted to thank everyone for coming and supporting him. He wished everyone a happy Easter and claimed he would be back. However, throughout his interview, he was getting booed by the fans. But other fans who noticed the awkwardness in his reaction were left concerned by Raleigh's situation. One fan wrote, Man, Raleigh seems like a good dude. I don't know why they'd even interview him after he got battered the entire fight and then finished. Another fan wrote, why on earth do you have to interview a dude with a concussion? Also, a third fan wrote, Poor guy, seems like a good dude. However, his most recent appearance has been an Instagram live session, where he broke down after engaging in conversations as regards what happened in his bout against Isaac Cruz. Once the live session began, Romero looked confused and short of words again, so he seemed to have picked up the message he recently posted on Instagram and read it out to those following the session. On his Instagram account, he had posted a message about the matchup where he was sending appreciations and words of gratitude to those who had supported him, while promising to make a much-anticipated comeback. The message read, I want to congratulate Pitbull on a great fight and achieving his dream of becoming a world champion. Every time I step between the ropes, you know I risk my life and my health, and that in a sport of winners and losers, there can only be one of two outcomes when the battle is over. I came into this fight prepared to show the world my heart and my skills, and I felt I displayed that on Saturday night. He also added, I never once got knocked down, let alone knocked out, and the ref had to save me from myself because I'm fearless and got cold balls of steel and wanted to keep fighting and putting on a show until the end. When you lose a fight, usually, the support starts to dry up and people stop calling to check in with you. But after Saturday night, I've received so much love and support from so many different places. It's made a huge difference being able to cope with and accept this defeat. Thank you to Amazon Prime, Premier Boxing Champions, my team and all of my sponsors, and you the fans for putting all your support behind me. I promise I will be back better and stronger than ever. To further prove to myself and naysayers that I belong at the top level of the sport with the best of them. Raleigh Romero said, we'll do it today then. Boom, I went over there again, he didn't fucking show up a second time, and he got fucking, he was just scared. He knows mm. that fucking, he, I don't think he, he thinks I was scared of him, motherfucking, motherfucking scared of me. Oh, oh, this is fundamental. He goes this way, get punched in the face. He goes this way, get punched in the face. He goes boom, 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 boom. That, those are his fundamentals. Before closing his statements with the hashtag, hash Raleigh is forever. Once he was done repeating most of these words again, he was confronted with the reality of speaking up again, and he coped so badly. In the comment section while he was live, fans kept asking what happened to him during the bout. While querying him on the outcome of the match, one fan even went as far as saying he fought like he had no plan. 
In response, he said, I feel so bad about it. I feel so miserable. It's not what I wanted, but it just happened that way. I want to apologize to all my supporters for how it went. He uttered each word with so much emotion and sadness. He then continued saying, I trained for months for this. I did all I could. I really can't explain what happened in the ring. I've tried to watch videos of myself and see where I went wrong, but before he could mutter any more words, he burst into tears and was speechless for minutes. The fans that earlier queried his approach to the fight were soon appeasing and calming down his emotions. One fan said, Raleigh, you'll be back soon. We know you're a good guy and this won't last. Get back to the gym. Get a trainer and fix yourself and everything will be fine. One other fans in similar vein said, even Tyson had losses. It's just a part of boxing. Don't beat yourself up, Raleigh. You're already a world champion and it's written in history books. You can surely bounce back and become all you've ever wanted to be. I hope to see you soon. Once he could put himself together, he continued his comments saying, I don't know what went wrong, but I will take time off. I would retreat. It's difficult for me, but I will find a way around myself. Thank you, everyone. However, one of the responses that picked him up after his breakdown came from undefeated boxing legend Floyd Mayweather Jr. Adding to the chorus of support, Floyd Mayweather, in a gesture that resonated deeply within the boxing community, expressed his pride in Romero. Floyd Mayweather offered a beacon of guidance to Rolando Romero. On Instagram, Mayweather's message was both a tribute and a roadmap for moving forward. I'm incredibly proud of you for achieving the remarkable feat of becoming a two-time world champion in less than 18 fights," he lauded. Mayweather's advice was clear and resonant. In this journey, we call life. You'll win and you'll lose. That's the game. But when people try to knock you down, don't let it keep you there. His words serve not just as encouragement, but as a reminder of the resilience needed in boxing and life. The bout between Isaac Pitbull Cruz and Rolando Romero has become the talk of the moment, so much so that the aftermath of their bout has been attracting more attention than the buildup. This may not be so much of a good news, as it means they both missed out on some more income they would have gotten if this happened before the bout. There were four fights on the night and four losers, including two champions who lost their belts. Of them all, Raleigh Romero has been the one to handle his defeat devastatingly creating more discussion topics regarding his bout against Isaac Cruz. Also, many supporters have questioned why this match was an undercard for the fight between Tim and Sebastian Fundora. To many spectators, it was the main event. But one truth about all the matches that were fought on that sad night for Australian boxing, where all three Australian fighters lost, was that all matches delivered in a classic fashion. <laughs> But he's going to zoom himself straight down the middle. Pandora doing some scene in many fights, which is use the distance. Stay at range. Champion. While the main event title bout between Tim and Sebastian Fundora had so much controversy around it, due to both boxers, especially Tim, sustaining injuries in the early rounds of the match. After dominating Sebastian Fundora in the first two rounds on Saturday, an inadvertent elbow opened a nasty cut on the forehead of rising Australian star Tim, producing a two-way, bloody war for the unified junior middleweight championship. Tim was cooking early and gaining momentum against a Fundora who owned 9 inches of height advantage and nearly 10 inches of reach on the Australian. But once that accidental elbow landed and Tim suffered that deep, ghastly gash on his forehead, keeping the blood from his eyes became a constant battle. Though Tim, who entered the bout as the World Boxing Organization 154-pound champion, fought valiantly, Fundora's jab got the best of him as he used the weapon to bank rounds. Fundora's nose was a bloody mess as well as he fought breathing through his nose, but in the end, he was able to bounce back from the devastating 7th round KO loss he suffered against Brian Mendoza last April. It was Fundora, who has 21 wins, a draw and a loss, with 13 knockout victories, who capitalized upon the huge risk of accepting the fight on just 11 days notice, to rely on his advantages of 9 inches in both height and reach to upset the favorite Tim via split decision inside T-Mobile Arena. Fundora gave Tim his very first and only defeat so far after his 24 wins, 17 knockout victories. Two judges scored it for Fundora on scores of 116. 
112 and 115. 113, while the third had it 116. 112 for Tim. CBS Sports also scored it for Tim. 115, 113, in one of the bloodiest title fights in recent memory, which capped an explosive pay-per-view debut for Premier Boxing Champions on Prime Video. Pandora doing some scene in many fights, which is used the distance. Stay at range. Champion. Go. We've been praying for this moment for a long time. I'm just thankful Tim gave me the opportunity, Sebastian Fundora said. Fundora, 26, joined his younger sister, 22-year-old Gabriela Fundora, the IBF women's flyweight champion, as the rare siblings in boxing history to each hold world titles. He also set up a huge fight on the horizon when he faced off with former unified welterweight king, Errol Spence Jr., who was in attendance and shared equal interest in making his return from his lone career loss to Terence Crawford in last summer's undisputed showdown. It's time to get it on. He has got the big dog now. Let's go. This is the first time I'm seeing him in person. He has a pretty good height, but we will break him down like we always do, Spence said. The razor-thin loss was a heartbreaking one for Tim, the son of Hall of Famer Kostya Tim, who was making his Las Vegas and headlining U.S. pay-per-view debut. He was also lighting his giant southpaw opponent up with hard right hands in round two until the errant elbow from Fundora badly cut him on the hairline. The entire tenor of the fight changed from there, despite Fundora, whose nose began gushing in the same round, equaling his opponent's crimson mask covering his entire face. The two fighters showed tremendous heart and resilience as the fight somehow went the distance, despite numerous stoppages for the ringside doctor to check Tim, whose vision was badly compromised over the final 10 rounds. Look, I told you, I'm an old throwback fighter. Whatever circumstance, I couldn't see. But all credit to the better man tonight, Tim said. You know, these things happen. The momentum was rolling and swinging hard in the first two rounds, and then boom, you're blinded. Congratulations to Fundora. He's the new king of 154. Fundora, who was originally scheduled to face Serhai Bohakuk on the pay-per-view main card for the vacant WBC title that was stripped from Jermel Charlo, accepted an upgrade to the main event after former welterweight champion Keith Thurman pulled out with a biceps injury. Fundora also claimed Tim's WBO title, along with the WBC, while Bohachuk defeated late replacement Brian Mendoza on Saturday's undercard for the interim WBC title. The fight also showcased a dramatic shifting in strategy from Fundora, a fan-favorite brawler who usually punts on his size advantages in favor of phone booth fighting. It's a style that cost him in his last outing in April of last year, when he was ahead on the scorecards late before being knocked out by Mendoza, who went on to lose a decision to Tim six months later. Unable to trade leather with the harder-punching Tim, Fundora adjusted by boxing from the outside behind a consistent jab that created a conundrum for the judges who were forced to choose between Fundora's consistent touches and Tim's desperate countershots, which often visibly moved Fundora backward. The first round I was like, damn I didn't want to break my nose today, Fundora said. My dad, trainer Freddy Fundora, said it to my cutman, I've been bleeding my whole life. Tim is a world-class fighter. He was a world champion for a reason. It was an honor to share the ring and make history with him. Tim, 29, was outlanded by Fundora, according to CompuBox, by a margin of 194 to 175. Tim held the edge in body shots 57 to 21, but was nearly doubled in jab output. Tim was also more efficient in a rare loss for a fighter landing 47% of his power shots and 43% overall. Fundora landed eight jabs per round after landing just three per round in his previous five fights. Fundora was all smiles on his walk to the ring, and after the victory when he stood across from Spence and verbally accepted the title challenge. I think it would be great. Spence is one of the greats, pound for pound. If I could get a win over him, it would be history again, Fundora said. But more than the title challenge with Spence, Tim has been given a golden opportunity to reclaim his world title after Sebastian Fundora's promoter on Tuesday said the towering inferno had agreed to a rematch. Fundora's promoter Samson Lukowitz said he would put aside $30 million blockbuster bouts against Errol Spence or Terence Crawford to honor his word of a return bout against him. It is understood that Allianz Stadium in Sydney and Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane are two potential locations to host Fundora Tim 2 should the newly minted Unified American World Champion consider a rematch in Australia. 
In the wake of Tim's blood-soaked split decision loss to Fundora last Sunday, when he fought 10 rounds with a shocking head cut, Lukowicz indicated his fighter would next look to big money bouts against Crawford or Spence. But the veteran promoter has since backflipped, apologized to the Tim camp, and insisted Fundora would put his World Boxing Council and World Boxing Organization titles on the line against the Sydney Cider in his next fight. Tim, step up when you're ready. My word is always equal to a signed contract. Your rematch is ready when you are. The ring is waiting, Lukowicz said. Lukowicz said he was initially angered when Tim called him a weasel on the eve of the fight, but he had no interest in being vindictive towards the fallen Australian world champion. I realized I made a mistake, he said. I have apologized to Tim's management. I sent a WhatsApp message and said, sorry, I'm upset, but my word is my bond and you have a rematch. I was very upset with Tim and the way he behaved. I was upset how he called me the names he called me. It was disrespectful to a 73-year-old man, he added. I didn't sign any rematch clause, but after the fight, I woke up the next morning and said to myself, this is not me. I was upset by what Tim said about me, but I have to honor what I say. And I did say verbally, there would be a rematch. I have scratched Spence as the next fight option and said it will not happen, he said. In a court of law, I don't know if Tim's promoter can beat me, but we don't need to go to court. We don't need a lawyer. I have worked in this business for three decades and they know my word is my bond. You don't need a contract with me. I will comply with my word. The rematch may yet take place again in Las Vegas, given that Fundora is the defending champion and may be reluctant to give up home advantage by undertaking a grueling trip to Australia. A Fundora Tim 2 return bout is likely to take place within 180 days. Tim's manager Glenn Jennings said the soul taker, 24-1, 17-KO, could overcome the first loss of his career to exact revenge against Fundora, January 1st, 21, 13-KO. Tim would win a rematch 100%, Jennings said. He nearly won this fight with blood pouring out of his head. He was one point away with one judge from keeping his belt. We will pursue the rematch. It makes sense. Fundora has the same options against Crawford and Spence that we had. I understand money rules boxing, but we would love a rematch either here or in Vegas. It's a contract, it's not just verbal. We've had a mixed run with his promoter. He is a crafty campaigner and he has rattled our cage, but he knows there is a time frame in place that we can exercise and enforce. We would love a big Australian show. That's not out of the question. I will let No Limit run that side of things and we'll look at the commercial terms and work out the best outcome for Tim. The loss on his record is irrelevant. It will do some damage in the rankings, but he was the talk of the town in America, and everyone was amazed by his courage and bravery, he added. I would love to see Fundora come to Australia. There is not a doubt in my mind that Tim, trouble-free, will win the rematch and could stop Fundora. However, Tim's return is expected to be between the next six and nine months after the injuries he sustained on Saturday. Tim's trainer slammed critics of their cut management during the boxer's bloody loss to Sebastian Fundora and believed the fight should have been stopped by the doctor. Igor Golubev, Tim's uncle and longtime trainer, said the commentary around the cut man, Mark Gambin's treatment of the wound is ill-informed, while revealing Tim could be out of action until December. These people just want positions. Everyone will say they could do it better, but they weren't there, Golubev told this masthead. If you are not there, you can't know. We've never seen a cut like this. The blood was flowing like it was coming from a pipe. You need to stitch it up and put tape to stop the blood. You can't make the bleeding just stop. I was sure the doctor was going to stop it. The fight should have been stopped after round four. I couldn't believe how much blood was. But he let the fight keep going. Tim was wiping the blood away. He could barely see anything, and they kept the fight going. So I thought, okay, we have a job to do. When I walked into the ring after the fight, I thought we won. Fundora landed a lot of jabs, but Tim hit him with the harder shots. Six to nine months, I'd say. We won't do any sparring until we have a fight locked in. I work backwards from that date, Golubev said. Right hook by Fundora Lane. Not getting too crazy. I couldn't believe how much blood was. Tim is expected to be the latest by December due to his injuries, and Romero's fans would be hoping he doesn't take that long before returning to the boxing ring. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below.
For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.